Welcome to that Davis show. I am Kenneth Davis, your co-host, along with my co-host, Ryan Bukovetsky. Follow me at That's Davis. Follow him at Ryan B. Ski and Ryan B. Ski 1 on Instagram, even though he doesn't use it. Um, <laughs> we'll talk some football, everybody. We'll talk about the Bears. We'll talk about, you know, some of the stuff that came out at the Combine in Indianapolis when you had Bears general manager Ryan Poles and Bears head coach Matt Eberflus address the media. But something broke out today that could affect – the Bears plans as far as what they're going to do in this upcoming NFL draft, 2023 NFL draft. Hold on, let me cut my phone off or silence it rather. Um, and that's um, former Georgia star defensive tackle Jalen Carter has been charged with reckless driving and racing in connection with the death of his teammate and a recruiter. Uh, just to give the respect to them, uh, Devin Willock was an offensive lineman on the two time uh, national champion Georgia uh, Bulldog team, and Chandler uh, LaCroix was a recruiting staff member. Uh, she was driving the expedition uh, that ended up crashing during this alleged race, um, and uh, uh, Carter was driving a, a Jeep Trailhawk, um, which doesn't matter, or, or it's not saying that that's important to this discussion. Um, it's a terrible and it's an unfortunate event. And it was right after it. the national championship. national championship game. Thank right you. Right after, right after the national championship celebration, they were leaving the national championship celebration. Uh, I believe down there in Athens, Georgia. And um, you know, this has kind of been quiet. Um, we didn't necessarily know for sure. Um, we heard a few rumors about perhaps something going on with Jalen Carter, but they were unspecified, or perhaps because we're not close. Because I took it as maybe some stuff happening on campus or something like this. I, I'm now I'm alluding. I'm thinking that this may have been the thing that uh, people were talking about when they may have mentioned a, a little character issue. I shouldn't say little character issues. Um, look, this is messed up. Um, Carter has come out and said that he will be fully exonerated, and he's in Indianapolis. He's going to head back to Athens and hand himself over to the authorities. Um, we will see. Um, the question here um, is how does it affect his draft status? And perhaps the player that would look likely if the Bears took um, the trade assets of the Indianapolis Colts at four and moved to four, it seems that the team above them, the Cardinals, if the Cardinals stay pat, would probably take um, defensive end or outside linebacker, a rush in, I should say, from Alabama, Will Carter. Um, does this just this should or does this hurt Jalen Carter's draft stock uh, being involved in an incident like this? Um, yeah, to a degree. Um, this is a very touchy and tedious subject to be be honest with you. Um, just, and I just want to be open with all of you and not hide and duck away from it. You're talking about two people lost their lives. Um, you're talking about all of them were being reckless, particularly, uh, Jalen Carter and Chandler LaCroix. Um, I think about Devin Willock being the passenger seat. I mean, he had to be okay with it. I think LaCroix was his girlfriend. So he had to have been fine with her racing along with allegedly racing along, I should say with uh with carter um i don't know i think it depends on how well you know this player if you view this as a, a tragic accident and someone being young and being dumb um when you're young a lot of times you think you you're invulnerable um i know that i've raced people before i'm not saying that it's okay because i could have hurt myself and even worse i could have hurt someone that had nothing to do with it or the, the person that i was racing against um, but I try to look through it through that lens. Like how many of us in our early 20s haven't raced someone? You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Like that. You don't get into it thinking, oh, my goodness, we're going to crash. You're thinking, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to be able to navigate through this traffic. The uh, Ford Expedition reached prior to the crash a speeds of, I believe, 104 miles per hour. That's wild in the expedition. Um I mean, that's I'm just being honest. I mean, these are two, these are three young people um, and they were doing something stupid as hell. And what we always were, we were warned about when we were young people. And I'm sure what they've been warned about, the worst result came back when your parents tell you why they don't want you racing in a car. And that is stupid and stuff. This is the reason they tell you not to do. It. Um, I would have to see how often he crosses his, you know, and you have to talk to the staff down there and the, you know, some staff members may want to keep their names clean as far as, or, or not to say their their names clean. Their, yeah, their names as far as their last names um, honorable. And we'll tell scouts the truth. 
Some people may want to cover for the player because they have affinity for him because they brought him through their their program and he's about to go on and he was he's he seemed until today this close to getting top five draft money easy. And now you're wondering one. I mean, I, I, I hate to say I, I believe he's still going to be drafted because he's been charged with two misdemeanors. The tragic part is that people died in, in involvement of them. But it's since they're misdemeanors, I think the NFL has been a result business. He's going to get drafted. And I, I could be wrong here. I think clearly he's still going to be a first round draft pick. I don't even know for sure if he falls out of the top 10. But again, I think it falls on now since this happens happened. Well, it already happened, but we found out about it, that it's leaked. Now, will there be more issues leaked about his behavior and his decision-making skills is how I feel about it. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, I, I think I'm with you that probably not much is going to change with the draft stock unless some stuff gets like uncovered from this that shows some... Not that this isn't lack of character judgment, but maybe more of an extreme lack of character judgment. Um, you know, it's like you said, you do stupid stuff when you're young. You just won a national championship. It's no excuse, but you, that's part of growing up and making mistakes sometimes. And I, I hate that it came at the loss of life. That's never something that it's okay I just don't know, you know, how much of it is on Jalen Carter that everything happened the way it did. And I don't know if we'll know the full facts. And I don't know if he should just kind of like be done with life because this happened either. So I'm going back and forth. I feel very bad for the victims involved. It, you know, when you're drinking, the last thing you should be doing is racing. And if that was kind of the result, he should get some serious punishment for that. I'm not saying like, give him a slap on the wrist or anything like that. But if for whatever reason, legality wise, he gets out of it exonerated, whether he's culpable or not, you know, just depending on legal loopholes or just innocence, whatever, I think he's going to be drafted high. I mean, everybody's been talking about him as the top prospect. He's the only defensive tackle in the draft. You can get edge rushers. Like if you, if you felt between Will Anderson and Jalen Carter that they had the same draft grade as a prospect, teams might be leaning, uh, obviously, Jalen Carter because he's, only three technique defensive tackle in the draft where you do have some other edge rushers that are definitely going to go in the first round. I wonder just even from the bears perspective, are they kind of looking at things a little bit differently? Like, you know, did you want to maybe not trade back so far because you wanted to have Jalen Carter? Does this affect that at all? Where maybe, you know, are you okay with going maybe bottom half of the top 10? And getting a, a yeah. good defensive player and deciding, you know what, let's just get a lot of picks. Let's avoid all of this. Our star player is Justin Fields anyways. It's not going to be Jalen Carter, even though he could be the star on the defensive side of the ball. Maybe this changes some things for them. And, and I wonder, because, you know, that was the thing Ryan Poles was talking a lot about yesterday was character with prospects and people and players does this kind of change anything for them, or was that more of kind of like lip service? Just to be clear, um, LaCroix's blood alcohol concentration after toxicology report was 1.97, I mean, uh, more than twice the limit in Georgia um, at the time of the crash. I, we, had, we did not see in the charges that were given to Jalen Carter that he, he was charged with uh, driving under the influence. So it would seem like he wasn't under the influence unless they're going to come out with that later. I would have, I would think they would have come out with it now, but I'm not an attorney. So I don't know legally how they may go around trying to handle some situation like that. But just to point out, as we know right now, it can come out later. We don't know anything about Jalen Carter being under the influence or significantly under the influence. I just wanted to say that real quick right there. And again, if he was that blood alcohol content driving and doing whatever he was doing, regardless if he's the one specifically at fault or just uh, aided to the the whole accident and the whole situation, he should get some severe punishment for that. Period. End I mean, of story. Like it can't end in a loss of life, and you're just really drunk driving. Like and that's no, where no, I again, see I'm the draft status so. being very effective. Yeah, I'm saying Carter, if they come out. Okay, okay, okay. Just to be sure that they have said yeah. they had nothing about him being intoxicated. 
Yeah. All right, just if they were to come out or if yeah. something like that, if they like, were to come out, I yes, seeing, I'm with we you. We need to start going you. jail time here. Yeah, if they were to come out and say that, then it it should be more severe. Um, if he too was under the influence, um, again, it's just messed up on the football side, which is something like this is why you hate discussing it. Um, it could, and I hate to say it, if 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 some teams pull him off of their board and. You know, in the top seven or eight, it could benefit the Bears if they were trapping down to where they could still get him lower than they expected to get him when you didn't know if he would pass four. Um, so you that's that's kind of like the last part, you know, saying as far as I feel like discussing it, because anytime people lose their lives, it's a touchy subject. And when we're in a toy box talking about sports, it kind of belittles the seriousness of life and death. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you. It's it's more important about the people that were lost than talking about draft status and things like right. that. But that's we're point. also in the news. We're also in the media. We're in the news. And that is what is being talked about. And that's going to be the pervasive sports story here in Chicago, regardless of what's happening at Athens. All right. Transitioning back to Indy. Um, Bears general manager Ryan Poles met with the press. Um, he was asked an assortment of questions. Of course, the largest one, the one that's on our mind the most is would you trade Justin Fields? Um, and basically he stuck to the script as far as, no, he's not really leaning. We heard Adam Schefter come out the day before and said which way the Bears are leaning as far as they're leading the trade to, to move down and keep Fields. Um, so he's kind of said that. He mentioned that he's, he's still been in contact with Justin, keeping him abreast of everything so that there's no uh, miscommunication in a situation where you're feeding the media a little bit of info and perhaps you would move him in case teams – aren't giving you enough, and then you want to put the fear of your guy's not going to be here, I'm going to take him yourself um, out there. Also, the fear of, hey, there's some other teams that are offering us a lot of stuff. Uh, the Bears allegedly have been uh, rumored to be in contact already. Teams have contacted them wanting to uh, come up and get the first pick in this upcoming draft. Um, Polls talked about, you know, the improvements that Fields needs to make um, and just the needs that the Bears have in general. He still kept things pretty much close to the vest. Um, but what are your thoughts on uh, General Manager Ryan Poe's press conference yesterday, Ryan? Um, I thought he, it was surprisingly a little more forthcoming than mm-hmm. I anticipated. I, I expected a lot more like, we can't talk about that. Oh, Ryan Pace, like, hey, guys, you got to understand. Uh, it's that time of year. We, we're, we can't talk about anything ever, 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 ever. Like, I was expecting that kind of response for a lot of these questions. Um, I think just overall... It felt like to me, if we're taking what he said, because it's lying season, everybody. Guess what? Like, it doesn't matter really what Ryan Poles or anybody says at all at this point. You just don't know what's true, what's not true, what's a half truth, what's a nugget of truth, what has some truth lying underneath all the lies. There's a lot of webs to untangle. But from what it sounded like to me, it felt like they were trying to put out a front of support and kind of dedication behind Justin Fields. Now that was the intention of what they were doing. Maybe that means something else, but it felt like they were really trying to show their Justin Fields kind of like commitment as far as you probably would go in the situation that they're in. They can't just out, out like outright say, Hey, he's our starter. We're definitely trading the pick that obviously loses all their leverage. In terms of what he said, though, that's about as close as I felt like you could really get to. And it seemed like to me, I don't know about you, that they aren't worried at all about trading down as far as it goes. I don't know. like The the focus on him, on one of the questions of what's kind of more important to you, like getting that player or getting those extra picks, he definitely gave, you know, merit to both sides, but he kind of kept – uh, definitely hitting home on the extra picks section of his response of the answer. So I expect trade downs. I, I think it's no coincidence we're starting to see a lot of mock drafts with not just one trade down, multiple trade downs for the Bears. And we know it. They need that roster really well done. I mean, the thought of Jalen Carter or Will Anderson is very intriguing. But I just wonder, you know, there's going to be a lot of good defensive players. And if you can get a lot of extra picks, 
and you can shore up offensive line a little bit. You could shore up pass catcher a little bit. And maybe this isn't just the draft. This is also free agency. But if you knew your offense was shored up, you had a more NFL caliber defensive line with your young secondary. I mean, isn't that what you're trying to do? Just make Justin Fields great. You're not necessarily trying to find Justin Fields on defense. But see, that's kind of an issue with me because with all the holes that the Bears have, if they had a true game record on the defensive side, it would cover up for a lot of a lot of the inadequacies that they have because they really need two drafts and two free agency periods to probably fix the trenches the way that we probably prefer. And to think that we're just going to have because we're going to put all rookies out there again, you know, or not, you know, starting, but as much time that rookies got out that last season. Well, I'm fans. hoping you make a big splash in free agency, but yeah, there'd be a lot of rookies. And, and the problem with free agency is now how many of these guys are going to get tagged? And Ron Payne is basically off the market. Now you're going to be dealing with older, unless you go with Mont, um, with the Denver Broncos, as far as three technique guys, you're going to do a Hargrave who's 30 years old. Um, is that the window? I mean, I'm willing to do it just for a few seasons to have someone capable right there and dr- during the next couple of years or even his draft, try to find that raw, that, that raw nugget, that diamond in the rough to train to be the replacement or train to be on the opposite side of him at times. Um, so that's where it's still kind of iffy when we keep talking about, well, man, just trade back, trade back, trade back. You, you may only have a chance to get a guy that's a Hall of Famer, but let me play devil's advocate. You never know which one of these other defensive ends or – even DTs, maybe a guy people were like, man, people didn't even know or didn't see that he could be like this. But as of right now, I don't know if the Bears have proven to me or this front office that, you know, that they 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 hit on guys like that all the time because that's true. I mean, it's 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 not that, you know, Brisker and Gordon were basically guys that are back into the first round, top of the second round guys. So it wasn't as much as you as if they had put up the production and other teams. Now, I know that uh, one of them slipped. I believe Gordon slipped due to injury. Um, but still, you know, that's the that's the reason where we've been told. Um, but then when you look at kind of the rest of the draft, I mean, the, the Trenton Gill and Jack Sanborn, an undrafted uh, free agent, you know, that's something. I mean, if Braxton Jones grows more, you did a really yeah. good job. You know what I'm saying? Um, but still, it's not like – you know, Braxton, because oh, really we're saying it's Braxton Jones. I mean, you could say Sanborn too, but like you, there's a chance you still let Sanborn out on the streets. Yeah. You know, like he may be the guy. That, he'll, he'll probably be a teamer backup, but yeah, he could be on the streets. He's that close. Right. No, no, I meant as far as they almost didn't get him because he oh, yeah, yeah. drafted free agent. He mm-hmm. may have been a guy that maybe you should have traded for another seventh round pick giving up a six from next year to get a seven because you wanted to make sure he came here. Now, I know him being from the area probably benefited the Bears to where I want to play for my hometown team. You know what I'm saying? So you you knew you probably had more leverage to bring him in, but there was still a chance that someone could have offered him something. He'd be like, yo, I got to go here. You know what I'm saying? Somebody could offer him a a job job. You didn't even know he was going to be a starter when you brought him in. So I can't – I mean, so again, it hasn't been proof that like, yo – you know Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham. Now, I want that to be the – dog, if these two guys are like 75 80% hit rate, dude, I'm going to talk the most trash and shit <laughs> about our front office throughout the world. And that's what I hope to happen, but I'm not going to come here and lie before the proof is in the pudding. You know what I'm saying? So that's still – and also some of this comes with I'm an abused Bears fan. So I'd rather have the sure shot at times rather than – the sleuth, I'm about, to, I'm about to find something they don't know about. And then right. you got average to below average. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's still kind of my fear about not trying to still grab a blue chip guy. You know what I'm saying? Because if you could, like, if you can make a deal, and I, Sean Sierra was the first person I heard say, say this on uh, the Lucky Lefty Chicago podcast with Sean Davis uh, this Monday. Um, he mentioned trading back to two, right? And then trying to get the Colts to come to two. So then you get the fourth pick and you get another pick and you already got assets. I don't know what the assets will be 
if you would get the both, I mean, both where you have to get the first first rounder from Houston, but I don't know if you can get their second first rounder. But if you could put, look, if you could pull that, hey, if you could even get the Texans second round pick, that's a, that's a number 32 in the first round this year. Yeah. So, I mean, if you could, yeah, if you could do that, that's definitely, and also you got to give me a little bit more because you, then you have to go back to what the bears had to give the 49ers for to move up for Mitch. Yeah. It was multiple you know, thirds, so, and I th- yeah. want to say another draft pick. Yeah, so you have to you have to look at, but that, that I think that's the framework. ultimate scenario right there. If you can trade down twice and be at four and still have, in theory, Anderson or Carter, I think that's the best route that you could possibly take. I I guess I would just wonder. What a team like Carolina or Las Vegas or whatever, if you are short on the quarterback carousel, is anyone really like throwing those major first rounders down to move up? Are we talking, remember like years ago, I mean, obviously remember Mahomes and Watson, but you remember Julio Jones when Atlanta like came from like 20 something down to like six to draft Julio Jones and get him in there and they just gave up a crap ton of picks like. I wonder how like how enticed would you be by that? Like, is there a number of first rounders where you're like, okay, I'm fine going down, or is it just, hey, I want to be at four with a couple trade downs and that's it? Man, if you can give me three first rounders, you can have whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can give me like every every year, I have for the next several couple seasons, um, I have first round pick, two first rounds pick, basically. In every draft, you can do so. At that point, not this year, maybe next year. Then you can you can trade them to go get a player that you covet to, to cover up a hole. You know, what I'm saying like those wide receivers that got traded last year. I mean, it was the past season. And that's why like that. that's where I come back to. I really like Jalen Carter. I really like Will Anderson as draft prospects. I still get worried, you know. If they're these bona fide kind of like Hall of Fame type players, you don't want to miss out on that. But I just think like when you're talking about trench warfare in the NFL, bodies are rolling on bodies. There is all types of freak accident, injury, mistake things that happen that you just simply can't prevent. Like you kind of can with quarterback or receiver, some of these positions out on an island, not in the trenches. And if a team, let's say you had to go to nine with Carolina, but you're getting first round picks and we're talking every year, the Bears for like the next two or three years have first round picks. That's the teams that really do stuff, whether it's moving around in the draft or trade for people like you just mentioned. Yeah, but also those teams have a game record all probably on one, if not both sides of the ball. Like you look at the Eagles and look at what their offensive line and defensive line could do. Because of all the picks they had, you look at the wide but, but receivers. With those, with those, how many of those guys are the people they drafted though? Because there, there's a lot of Riddick talent wasn't, that they Riddick, brought Riddick, in. Riddick, yeah, and I look at a team like San Francisco. They have the game breaker Debo Samuels on offense, obviously, but a lot of the other and George Kittle, but Kittle, a lot of the other yeah. pieces they kind of acquired. Defensively, they have Nick Bosa, and then they've obviously mm-hmm. drafted all of these pieces. But, like, you just see it. If they don't have the quarterback ever figured out, that team, like, we like them every year because they are loaded everywhere else. They just can't get over the hop, the hump. But what has kept them sustained there while they've struggled with this quarterback is all the draft trades that they've had and then constantly being in the first round. But it's also because how well they drafted, though. Like they, you get to a certain point where you have the entire team and then you can go out and give up three ones to get a Trey Lance. You know what I'm saying? Or you get to a certain point and even though Trey Lance is hurt, you know, listen, if we had the first or second best running back in football and he can do every, he can do a whole lot of stuff, if not everything in a Christian McCaffrey in this system, it could really take us from here to here, regardless of who's behind the center. Because now every level we have this do it all running back, we have this do it all receiver, and we have this two way tight end. You know what I'm saying? But, but don't so, you think look, that kind of speaks Mike McClinchy, to you? You look at Mike McClinchy, they, they, who's their free agent. They they drafted him. 
Like a lot of, I mean, a lot of the guys on their team, they built, they built it out, and then they made the deals. You you can't just go and make the deals, particularly before you're in that window. Like when we're talking about the Eagles, the Eagles are in that window, so it was time to go out and get C.J. Gardner. I forget how many different names the young man has, but the safety nickel. It, you know, you can go out and took from the Saints. You can go out and make that move because the Saints are cash strapped and they can't do anything. And you can start doing stuff like that. O- on top of that, your quarterback's getting paid second round money. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 you still have to set the foundation. And that's what Ryan Poles has sold to us, that you don't win through free agency. You win through you have the dogs and then you go and pay for someone's past success. Now, I know we're talking about trades and using the assets for trades, but it's it's almost still the same thing. You're paying for someone's past success. Now, usually when you're trading for them, they're probably still young or elite. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it may be different than them actually making it in a free agency because most of the time people make it a free agency, the team's kind of either they're hurt, cash hurt or they're like, you know what? I don't want to have, I don't want to be caught, get caught, caught holding the bag when Father Time catches up on this player. You know what I'm saying? For so real. they still have to build this because we, they have too many holes, but still you want, when you talk about San Francisco, Nick Bosa. You're all right. Sure. It's off the bus. Oh, but problem. do you do you feel Carter or Anderson are Nick Bosa? Um, because I know I mean, going I, into that draft, that was a that was an easy one. I mean, Nick Bosa I, I at think, the top. I I think the problem is we got one comp. So Carter gets comp to Von Miller. So if you're saying that you could draft Von Miller today, you wouldn't draft Von Miller. The, right. I think the problem the problem with Carter is. He's so big. I haven't heard anybody say anything like Chris Jones. It's, I think it's hard to comp him. It's harder to comp him. You know what I'm and saying? And that's so the type does, of player I'm more interested in than which the I'm, comp. I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm becoming more of the Carter guy. Um, I've been Will, on too. Will Anderson's side. Um, I just Me worry too. about the the length of the the height of effectiveness for a defensive tackle. Like he may be dominant, dominant, dominant for several seasons. And then he's just good because of just the wear and tear and the desire. Um, like, you know, so that's where it always, where usually a rush, a really nice rush in, outside of them getting hurt, you can almost count it for maybe eight seasons, seven, eight seasons. You know what I'm saying? If they're healthy and they're really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they're yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. think about it. Von Miller's been like, was Von Miller's been like suspended like twice yeah. and hurt. Yeah. Had like, I think he's had maybe two significant injuries. So part Look of it. Look at Miles was, Garrett. He was just yeah. that bona fide edge guy, and you see what he does. He stays healthy, sacks on right. sacks on sacks. Yes, so the my point that I was trying to make, think about how many more sacks Von Miller would have had now, and we can. he's a Hall of Famer by all means. So that's always been my issue, but in that fear, Jalen Carter, one, goes along with what this team needs as far as the three technique, um, and again, we still don't know as far as the significance of what's going to happen to him with legal, legal, legality-wise. Um, but yeah, that that to me, I would still want one. I know this this draft has defensive ends. Um, DTs is a different beast um, as far as it's not as strong as it is with defensive ends and quarterbacks. Um, but that I, I'm I'm fearful of not catching a blue chipper because it seems like okay, you may have one blue chip player on offense and that's Justin, right? So and that's your quarterback. So you got you have a blue chip quarterback, all right. You don't have a blue chip offensive lineman. The closest thing you have to a blue chip offensive lineman is Tevin Jenkins, and he gets hurt too much, right? I, I'm a Tevin Jenkins guy. I want Tevin Jenkins to be healthy. If Tevin Jenkins is healthy all the time, I think he he's he maybe a tier below, but he he'd be closer uh, at, at at maybe being blue chip. But maybe he'd be a tier below. Let me just say that he'll be a tier below. You definitely don't have a blue chip defensive lineman. You may have some guys that are close. I think Eddie had been or initially when he got here, uh, Eddie Jackson. Blue chip last year, he was close to being by himself. And one thing that was pointed out, um, I believe it was by Matt Eberflus um, and Ryan Poles. And also we found out that they're not going to cut Eddie Jackson, probably. You know, they're expecting him to be. And, I didn't think uh, it would make you, sense. Right? Yeah, you you got him back to doing what he does best, and that's ball hawking. Right. And he was tackling. He was tackling last year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like there were some tackles that if he didn't make it, oh, me, oh, my, that person may have went to the house. So yeah. – it, he was tackling, and shout, shout out to Eddie for the resurgence that he had. A lot of players can't pull that off, and it's dope to see that he did it. 
um, at an extremely high level. And I hope his foot injury isn't something that lingers and he can get over that and get back to balling and leading that defensive side of the ball. Um, your, your defensive backfield is, is kind of sweet, you know, especially if those two young yeah. players take another step along with Jalen Johnson. Um, you're, Maybe you get a, a, a veteran free agent corner to kind of give you that outside and you can really have Gordon in the nickel or vice versa. Or Exactly, or vice versa. Um, you got to get you got to get somebody in here to be the weak side, even if you bring Morrow back and he has to but learn behind Morrow. You got to get somebody like, to be. A, do you think though? This is just where I struggle with it. You're completely right. They need more blue chip dominant players. They also just need players in general, and not just like star players, but good players that you can count on that maybe aren't stars, but they're going to be legitimate NFL starters for you. So we all know, like, it's almost like one of those things the Bears can almost do no wrong with whatever they do because we kind of need it. For sure. But I'm saying they could trade down and we could all get behind that. They could draft at number one, Will Anderson, Jalen Carter. We could get behind that. Like, there's not, there's definitely things they can do wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But they can mm-hmm. do a lot right. I think that it's not a – this isn't some thin, like, wire act across two buildings that they're trying to balance. Like, they have an actual bridge here that they're walking, but you can still slip and fall. I think that's where I really struggled, though, is unless you feel Jalen Carter and Will Anderson are those Nick Bosa's, the Miles Garrett, the yeah, what we're people, talking people about. Kind of feel like, they feel like that. People feel like that. I'm just saying that that's what – and if again, they're, if they're feeling – and I'm also saying if you're the Bears and you feel it, fine. But also in terms of just trading down and acquiring picks, being the first pick in the draft is a unique situation. And sometimes that, I think, has to be leveraged into the equation versus just kind of, you know, do you trade down or do you take a pick? You're, you're probably going to be in the top ten next year anyways, unless things dramatically change you still are going to have a chance at blue chippers. You might not have the chance to trade down again. Okay. But, th- but think about it like this. You, you have the ch- best chance to do both this year because you have number one. So you can trade down. Well, again, blue if you action. get the trade down to two, trade down to four, and get Jalen Carter, yeah. Will Anderson, that's the best route for them. By but far. I, w- and I want to say this, though, too. You need blue chips players at certain positions. And they don't have them at three of them. Offensive line, defensive line, receiver. You know, now you can get away with having a really decent, really nice receiving room. But we saw last year, unless you're Patrick Mahomes, and I mean, he still has Travis Kelsey, right? So he still has a blue chipper with him, even when I'm saying that. But we saw the teams at the end and who they had at wide receiver. Everybody had a guy. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about the Bengals got two guys. All right. The Eagles have two guys. The 49ers have two guys. And you look, they have, and then Baby Goat has, has Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid. You know, like, so you need to, so we have the quarterback. You got to get him the, the pass catcher. So that's one. You got to get somebody in front of him. How many of those lines had one of, if not the best player at their position? You know, right. offensive line. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, so you look at the 49ers that went out and got Trent Williams. You look at Orlando Brown Jr. with the um the Kansas City Chiefs. You look at a Jason Kelsey and all the players that they have on that that uh, Lance Johnson on that offensive line with the um the Eagles. You know what I'm saying? Like all these these teams had dudes, man. It wasn't just a flukey fluke fluke. They had dudes. You look at the fact that Joe Burrow. He, it significantly impacted him when three of his offensive linemen were out. But so you, you you have to. You cannot just fill this in with all in with decent to good. You're going to need someone who goes way past that and then allows the decent to good guys to eat because he has to be double teamed, you know, or you have to try to chip him if he's an offensive – I mean, if he's a defensive, defensive player, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you have to have – you have to have it. They can't. They can't. Now, look, it may not be this draft. I would say, hmm, because um, I don't know what the defensive lineman – I don't know what the defensive lineman look like in next year's draft. And if there's bona fide studs, like at the top of this draft. Um, so that's where still to you 
they don't. I mean, it'd be different if they had some blue, chip, like three blue chip guys on different layers on this team. I'll be more inclined to go along with you and be like, yeah, try to get you a blue chip guy. But if you can fill it out with some really good young players, great. Man, they are lacking. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Outside of the defensive, let back, me, outside of their defensive backfield, they're lacking. Let me let me pose a hypothetical, and we can get out of here on this. Let's say you're Ryan Poles. You, Ken, are Ryan Poles, or general manager of the Bears, whichever you'd like. President of football operations. Let's say the only trade offer you get is Carolina at nine, and it's a good trade package. Or you got to pick Will Anderson or Jalen Carter at one. Are you just going, going with back. the the pick, go- or are you trade? I'm going back, but I I, I I would go back, but. We both know that's not the only thing you're gonna get. No, I, I, I'm just, I just wanted to. I know it's a hypothetical. Kind of just get I know your a, thinking, your gauge. Right I mean, we're, we're lucky. This isn't the Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis QB draft. All right, because yes. then yes, we are. The Bears, the <laughs> Bears that have to take that pick. <laughs> Maybe my <laughs> scenario would be would be true. Right. We would have one right. team. Like, right. hey, if, we'll think if about it. Was, if this was a the Chris Ponder uh, year and uh, a guy Ooh, who went with him, Christian if this Ponder. was, yeah, if this was, was that, that EJ year, Manuel, was that, and it was name? also was it was Manuel? a player. If the Vikings took one, I think Carolina or the Jags took Vikings took Ponder, right? Vikings and Ponder. Carolina or the Jags took the other one, I believe. Anyway, not the Bills, not the Bills with EJ. I can't remember. No, it was somebody EJ else. It was, it was somebody else. Because the EJ one was – wasn't the EJ one – was that the was that the year, year before or after Geno Smith? Or did they both go to G- oh, G- G- Virginia Tech? Or it was EJ Manuel, Virginia Tech quarterback? I don't even remember it. No, EJ Manuel, I want to say, was Florida State. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So I think they came out – I think they came out the same year. But reg- guess what? It's not that – we're lucky enough – it's not that draft, and their team's thirsty for young QBs, so the Bears didn't get trapped at number one. Where again, and, and they're fortunate enough that the teams, their teams close to them, they need quarterbacks. It could be a situation where the Bears and four other teams, or the other four teams in the top five, have quarterbacks that they like, and so you're. It's like, oh, what? What? I mean, and then you'd be moving out of the top five. For anybody that's really trying to move up, but you may, may be able to stay within the top four and still pick up assets to help solidify this team for the moving forward in the future. And that's what you got to do. That's like that's the if we're talking the the targeting that you're trying to get. If you're Ryan Poles, you have got to find a way to add more picks. But you a big thing with drafts in general, and this is exactly to your point with blue chippers. You don't want to just get the fourth or fifth best defensive tackle in the draft. Like sometimes that guy turns out to be the best. But the reason why the teams like the Ravens are constantly good, they are constantly drafting the top player at a position, whoever the prospect is. And a lot of times people don't understand the gap that you can have between one and two or one and five. It can be extraordinary. So you've got to find a way to, if you trade back, still have the ability to pick up some of the top players at specific positions, especially positions that are strong in the draft that you need while, like I said, acquiring picks. You've got to try to do both, however best you can. You don't want to be one or the other because you're exactly right. They don't have enough top-end talent to even begin competing. I love the idea of acquiring picks just because I think it gives them more freedom to do things in general. But regardless of that freedom, they have to acquire top-end talent. All right. That's it for Ryan and myself. We always appreciate you taking a little bit of time. Uh, Be safe. We'll be bringing you more Bears content through free agency and the draft in about 57 days or something like that. Um, Definitely um, don't do anything stupid. I really, really mean that. Um, it's a lot of reckless driving, and I'm not just trying to prop put that all on those young people in Georgia just driving around here in Chicago. It's a lot of people doing a lot of foolishness, and it just doesn't make any sense. So keep your head screwed on straight, um, be safe, and we look forward to talking to you down the line.